Hello and welcome to Wagening University and Research. I'm Lizzie and in this video I am joined by two people from the Masters of International Land and Water Management. So let's start off with some introductions. Hello, I'm Brad. I'm one of the study advisors of the programme and I'm also teaching as one of the lecturers of the Water Resources Management Group. Hello, I'm Eva. I'm an international student from Germany and I study land and water management. So in this video, we are going to provide you with some more information about the Masters of International Land and Water Management. So to begin with, can you please just provide a bit more information about the program? Well, the program is what the name actually already suggests. It's, uh, it's about managing land and water in an international context by uh, scientifically analysing issues and questions related to, to land and water management. And we do that in Wageningen by combining insight from different disciplines, uh, from the natural sciences to study the physical aspects of it, engineering sciences to uh, study the, the technical part of it, and from the social sciences we use insights to, uh, to understand the social parts of the, uh, of the programme. So Ava, why did you choose this programme? Well, I wanted to do something with water and I wanted, as Bert just explained, I wanted to do something that's social and technical and yeah. environmental and that touches all those different domains. And also, I, I wanted to do a two-year master program mm -hmm. because I felt like I didn't learn enough in my bachelor. Yeah. <laughs> so I felt first I wanted some technical background in courses and then I also wanted some practical experience yeah. in an internship, which is also offered in the second year, and then dive deeper and do a thesis. Okay. So the cool. structure really appealed to me. And what specialisations are available in the program? Well, there are three specialisations. The first is uh, sustainable land management. The second is irrigation and water management, and the third is uh, adaptive water management. And at what point does a student select a specialisation? The students uh, select their specialisation in the first period of the first year. Mm -hmm. There's a course uh, which is uh, specifically designed for it, where they're introduced to the domain of the programme and explained what the different specialisations are about. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, students can make an informed choice of uh, of the specialization. And what are the courses in the program? Well, the program is patterned like this. Mm -hmm. um, there are what we call red thread courses, which are courses for which are relevant for all uh, specializations. So the uh, so the courses in in light, light blue. blue. Okay. And then for each specialization, there are two compulsory courses. There the ones in dark uh, blue. Then there are some restricted optionals, as you can see them here in green. So from restricted optionals, that means that each student has to uh, select at least one mm -hmm. of those courses. And then there's some free choice courses. Excellent. So there's quite a lot of flexibility in the programme. Well. Exactly. And so Ava, what was the most exciting course that you've done in this programme? Well, in the end of the first year, we have a course called Sustainable Land and Water Management, and for that we go to Spain for a month. Excellent. And then you have group work with five people and you have your own project where you tackle a land and water management problem. So that was very exciting. Amazing, you get to go to Spain. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned earlier that in the second year you have to do a thesis and an internship. So are you currently doing your internship? Yeah, I'm doing an internship right now. Excellent. I actually did a longer one than I had to. I had to do a four month internship, but I did seven instead. <laughs> you liked it so much that you stayed. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. And um, I work at an environmental consulting company called mm -hmm. Arcadis and I focus on the topic of city resilience, so how can cities um, prepare themselves to cope with stresses and shocks better, so, and then I focus on flooding and drought and water related issues. And so are you going to start your thesis soon? Yeah, I want to, I really like the topic I'm working on right now and I want to dive a bit deeper and um, focus on resilience but then in the context of um, informal settlements mm -hmm. and see how can people in poor urban areas where you have rapid urbanisation population growth but at the same time you have massive problems with flooding yeah, yeah. and lack of sanitation. How can you actually try to tackle problems there? Yeah, so it's been very challenging. And is this how it usually works for students, that their thesis and internship are linked or can they be completely different? They, they can be linked but often they are, they are separate. Okay. And um, well, often our students go abroad to do their fieldwork for their thesis mm -hmm. and then, well, like Ava, they pre prefer, if they do an internship, they prefer to do it with an organisation or a company in the Netherlands as a possible start-up to their uh, first job after graduation. Mm, 
So moving on to the admissions process, are there any specific requirements for this program? Well, first of all, I would say that if people are interested, that's already a big plus. Mm -hmm. Then program-wise, um, I think if people did courses on, on land management, on water management, mm -hmm. I think that's already uh, quite something. But that could be part of, of a, a bachelor program focusing on, on hydrology to a program on sociology. Yeah. In fact, in our program, we have students from many different disciplines uh, and they uh, successfully fulfilled the master. So a nice, diverse background. Exactly, yeah. And so can you give me an example of what jobs graduates typically do? Uh, students of this, uh, or graduates of this program, they, they uh, could go into the, uh, uh, into the job of a researcher by mm -hmm. doing a PhD or by working at an international research institute. They might go to, uh, to join uh, the government as an advisor, or in the Netherlands people could work with the water boards. They might do implementation-oriented work as a consultant or as an engineer, work at NGOs, many yeah. different possibilities. So lots of opportunity. Exactly. So I know that at this university there is the Masters of Earth and Environment as well as a Masters of International Development Studies. So what are the differences between those two Masters and this Masters of International Land and Water Management? Okay, well, the, it's a nice question. Actually, I think the program is right in between. Yeah. Um, Earth and Environment is focused more on, uh, say, natural sciences. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it, it, it doesn't have the, 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 uh, the social part of, of our program. Yeah. International Development Studies um, is, is a social science based program where a lot of the students feel like they don't have a connection to, yeah. uh, to the resources. And okay. in land and water, they, they have that automatically. So it straddles the two programs. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so Ava, as an international student, what is it like to study here? It's really fun. First, I, I was a bit afraid that it might be boring because I'm from Munich, which is yeah. a big city. And I thought, oh, Wageningen is so small, there's probably nothing to do. Mm. But I was completely wrong because there's just so many students from so many countries and such a great atmosphere. And everybody's really friendly and there are a lot of activities that students yeah. can do. And is there a lot of interaction outside the classroom? Yes, definitely. I think everybody from my study is quite down to earth. We like traveling, we have similar interests. Mm. So it's very fun and we all get along. So we have a huge WhatsApp group in which there's everybody and then we just invite people over to come barbecue, to go to the Rhine and to have parties. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So lots to do in and outside the classroom. Definitely, yeah. And so moving on to our final question. If somebody watching this video has some more specific questions about the Masters of International Land and Water Management, is there someone that they can contact? Well, they can contact us, the study advisors, at this uh, email address. Mm -hmm. And then they will be answered by me or one of my colleagues, study advisors. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining me today and answering these questions. Sadly, that's all we have time for today, but I hope that we provided you with some more information about the Masters of International Land and Water Management. If you have any additional questions regarding the general admissions process, then I would encourage you to email students at the.nl. In addition, you should check out the video called Essentials for Studying at Wageningen University, which also provides just some more general background information. Thank you very much for watching and we will hopefully see you here in the future at Wageningen University.